Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out another of these brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaurus series releases, and this time we've got the smallest of all of them, or at least the smallest so far. I don't really recall if there are any other smaller species. I think there probably is, I just can't really remember all of the vast amount of species included in this lineup, but... For this round of the very first wave, it's the smallest so far as we've got the Guanlong. And we have some really nice packaging for this one as well. First of all, you kind of have your classic as far as Beasts of the Mesozoic goes, as you have that window area. But then you also have the area over here that shows off some fantastic artwork. And I think this might be my favorite artwork so far. Like, I just really, really like that. Also, you have the species name running down the left-hand side, and then Tyrannosaurus series down here, as well as an area here where it tells you the scale of your figure. Which, of course, in this instance is 1 18th scale. And then once we turn it around, you can take a look here at the back of the box, and the back of the box shows off not only a really nice image of the figure itself, but also some information on both the species and the figure, and then a checklist here of all of the other figures, or at least most of the other figures from Wave 1. There were also some special editions as far as like the gray versions, like the unpainted versions, and then the Kickstarter exclusive paint variants. But outside of those, these are the more mainline versions of Wave 1 all of which we have now officially reviewed on the channel and this Guan Long was the only one left to get up for reviews so without further ado let's pop it out of the box and do just that so first of all and like always you have your assembly instructions which again cover pretty much everything from switching the feet to the tail to uh, the base everything everything's covered on these very important to read if you are again purchasing your first beasts of the Mesozoic figure if you are a few figures and you probably already have a pretty good idea of what you're doing but if not again you can always refer back to these instructions which will help you out on top of that we've also got the beasts of the mesozoic card we have a really really nice image here of our guan long here consuming some sort of a smaller species of i'm not sure what but he's definitely eating him and then here on the back you have an image there of the figure itself as well as the again information and everything on the species love the fact that they include these collectible cards then we have our base and i like the base that we have this time around you've got a nice little earthy area but you've also got kind of like a little rocky area and it almost makes me feel like it's the guanlong approaching maybe like a stream and uh, these are usually you find rocks that look very similar to this along a stream bed so I feel like that might be what's going on here as far as this figure goes. Then you've of course got all of your extras like you usually do when it comes to the different opposing feet. You can switch your feet out on your Dinosaur 4 to have different you know, positioning and everything as you have closed toes and open toes and of course the leaning so it looks like the dinosaur is picking its foot up or stepping down. And you also have the different ways to apply your dinosaur to the base as far as the stand goes. Some very, very cool extras you usually get. And then, of course, the star of the show, our Guanlong. And man, is that nice. This actually might be my favorite color scheme on any of these beasts of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series so far because I really feel like it's just like a super, super nice, really naturalistic color scheme that they've given it this time around and I'm a big fan of the blues that we have up here in the face I think that looks great and the way it plays off of the darker tones is really nice and uh just in general again the sculpt is fantastic this is a really cool one I also love the fact that it's you know so nice and small just because we've had so many larger ones and we have so many larger ones yet to go it is pretty cool to have a smaller Tyrannosaur series release like this so without further ado let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at it right now so starting up here at the head sculpt of our Guan Long, you can see again we've got some nice skin texture in the snout of the dinosaur. As we move back though toward the eye socket, you can see it quickly transforms to a nice feathering. And uh, the skin textured areas have this really nice bluish tone. I love that blue. And as you move up here into the crest of the Guan Long, you can also see that we have kind of like a bluish green up here which looks really cool and I think both of those tones of color play off of each other very nicely and at the same time they also play off of the darker tones of the majority of the body very nicely you can also see some black kind of streaks and designs here moving through the bluish areas or you used to be able to before my camera lost focus of course we have an articulated jaw as you usually have 
for your figure. You can see the inside of the mouth has actually a pretty surprisingly dark tone of color, not something that we often see on these figures, but I actually really quite like it. Kind of a breath of fresh air as far as that goes. You can see the teeth are sculpted, but since the figure is so small, they're definitely all sculpted together. You can see that on both the upper and lower jaw. There is a few areas of some slight separation between the teeth, but the majority of them are all kind of sculpted together. Being that this release is so small, we do not have an articulated tongue like you often find on the Beasts of the Mesozoic figures, but we do have a really nice gloss coat there on the inside of the mouth. You can definitely see we've got that nice kind of wet saliva-like look. In fact, the entire snout kind of has a bit of a slightly kind of a satin shine to it, which looks pretty cool. Definitely helps it to stand out. But as you move back here into the face, you can see again we begin to pick up some feathers. You also can take notice of the fact that we have some nice blackish tones here moving through. But we then transition to a white, but the white also kind of has like some yellowish tones to it, and it circles around the eye and then leads down through the course of the neck. The eye itself is painted with a nice yellow, given a nice black pupil which also has a nice gloss coat to it, helping to give it again a realistic eye shine. The lower jaw also has some black as you move down, but then you have some reds here on the underneath of the lower jaw leading into the throat. Those reds disappear though pretty quickly, and we have kind of like a reddish brown sort of a wash that's been applied right there. And you can see we do have feathers here running along the underside of the throat, so the figure definitely has a lot going on as far as the feather detail goes. And we have some pretty nice kind of uniform feathering here in the face, but as you move up here into the back of the neck, you see them get a little bit kind of crazier, but not really by much. As you continue to move down the course of the neck, you continue to see the really nice feather detail, but you also have that white stripe continuing to move down the side of the neck, more like an off-white stripe. And then, of course, the blacks running along the upper side as well as the underside here. And then on the underside of the throat, we have that brownish tone, but we transition to kind of like an off-white, similar tone of an off-white to what we have when it comes to the stripe moving down the body. As we reach into the shoulder blade area, you can see that white stripe or off-white stripe changes into more of a brownish tone. And we also have some dark brown tones that run through the stomach region as well. Almost a little bit kind of subtle as far as that paintwork goes because it's a dark tone within a dark tone, so you don't pick up on it quite as nicely as you do with the lighter tones. As you move down the course of the arm, you can see the arm continues to sport those nice feathers. We also have kind of like somewhat erratic looking feathers kind of hanging off of the back of the arm, which looks really nice. And then we've got a pretty nice looking hand sculpt as well as some nicely painted nails. I like that the undersides, the palms of the hands, if my camera would focus, there we go, uh, on top of sporting some nice looking skin texture, also have that really nice bluish tone. I really quite like that. Again, kind of uh, giving us those bluish vibes that we have up in the face in both the hands as well as an area of the legs. They do show back up right there as well. And of course, on top of the articulated jaw, you've got a spot of articulation here and here at the bottom of the neck. And this allows you to get some pretty nice poseability for your Guan Long. Definitely some really nice display options overall. And of course, allows you to articulate your dinosaur in most positions, and I would say this is probably the second smoothest of all when it comes to these Beasts of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series figures so far when it comes to the articulation uh, with the Juvenile Tyrannosaur leading, and this one I would say being a very close second. But as you move down into the shoulder, you can also see that we've got articulation there. It moves out away from the body a little bit, but also forward and back. You've also got the elbow, which most likely will be stiff. Uh, yes, definitely stiff. It does articulate in the elbow, but it's very stiff out of the packaging since I haven't really done much with it. And then you have the wrist, which can swivel and also can, you know, move forward and back, giving you some nice mobility in those areas. And then as you move down into the stomach, you can see another variation of a somewhat lighter brown here running along the underside of the black before we transition to that kind of off-white or a tannish type of a color for the underside. Moving up here, you can take notice to the spinal column moving along the back of the dinosaur, and if we get nice and close, you can definitely see how nice that feather detail looks. Again, the feather detail of these tyrannosaurs is out of this world. It's so nice looking. As you move down the thigh, even though it is covered in feathers, you can make out some muscle definition in the thigh area and then also in the calf. We continue to have those really dark tones of color. Moving down the leg before we transition back to a skin texture, and in the skin textured area, it has that, again, really nice light bluish tone like we saw on the palms of the hands, and similar in tone to what we see in the face, but a slightly lighter shade of color compared to what we see in the face. You do have some scoots running down the front of the foot for your Guan Long. You've also got some 
nicely again man my camera i guess because it's so small really doesn't want to focus on it but you have some nicely sculpted toes nice scoots down the toes and a very very bird-like foot sculpt for sure on the guanlong you can also see the nails are sculpted really nicely but also painted with a nice glossy black you can see the same over there for the dew claw and you actually have again some nice articulation actually before we even get to the legs you've got articulation in the midsection which is an area you usually always have when it comes to the beasts of the mesozoic figures you've also got the hip articulation and i actually just not the foot off while I was doing that so we are now footless let me put that back on there we go so I guess that shows you that it's definitely no task to switch out the feet for the other feet that we have in the package and then of course again as you move down you've got knee articulation wow that is impossible to move right now see this is one of the areas where the instructions come in handy because uh, I really want to show you guys how it articulates, although I would imagine at this point with so many beasts of the Mesozoic reviews on my channel, you've got a pretty good idea of how it works already, but the knee is super stiff and you don't want to force it. When you come to a situation like this, you really want to get either a hair dryer or just some really hot water and just kind of dip the figure in it or just run it under hot water and loosen the joint up before you try to force it to move because you can and most likely will break it if you try to just force it so it's definitely a better idea to heat that joint up uh, rather than forcing it so in a situation like that I'm not going to force it I don't want to break it but you do also have two spots of articulation as you move down again I knocked the foot off this foot must be pretty loose but uh, it goes on pretty easily but it like also pops back off pretty easily now uh, that time it actually looked like it took a little bit of effort but you have two areas of articulation as you move down. That one's a little stiff. I'm not going to do too much with that one either. But then you also, again, have the ankle, which can swivel and then move forward and back. So as you move back up here toward the tail, you again have that brown running along the underside, running kind of right above that tannish type of a color, and then the black running along the top. You've also got another spot of articulation right here, which is actually where the tail connects when you first get it out of the package. And then as you move out the length of the tail, you've got a really nice long tail for your guan long. You also have a nice striping effect as you lead out into the plumage there of the tail. And on top of that kind of off-white striping, we also have a black striping. And there are also some slight kind of like reddish-brown colors in there, which looks really cool. Definitely a nice flashy way to end the tail, but at the same time, a really nice naturalistic way, I would say. We do also have some striping here for the underside of the tail as well. And as you move back along the underside, not only do you continue to see that kind of like tannish type of a color, but you also can see how nice the actual feather detail and everything looks moving along the underside as well as how nice the undersides of the feet look when it comes to the sculpting and detailing. They as well look really good. But as far as a Guanlong goes, that is absolutely the best version in my collection. No doubt about that. This is a gorgeous looking model. The sculpt is fantastic and the paint job is definitely one of my favorites from the series so far. And then of course we also have the base. Again, we had already taken a small look at it at the beginning of the review, but you can see we have some nice earthy tones here as far as like some tans and then a nice like a nice dark brown wash i would say and then we also have some like rocky areas kind of surrounding the earthy area there's some like sticks and stuff and uh like a little larger piece of a broken tree right there and then as you move out into the side you can see again some really nice dark grays have been given to the rocky area and i feel like even this uh whole general area here looks more like a riverbed to me having actually taken a look at it because you have kind of like these sticks and stuff all over it almost feels like maybe there was some rain recently and it really kind of made the stream or river overflow a bit and this water has kind of run up and brought up some debris and stuff along the edge again that may not be what they were going for but that's kind of my takeaway from it but definitely a really nice really high quality base yet again for our guanlong and one thing i'm really curious about with this one is will the guanlong stand because it's so small compared to the others and i haven't tried to make it stand quite yet but i feel like there's a chance we could get it to oh there we go so yeah absolutely that actually wasn't even that complicated at all i thought i would definitely have to really try for that sweet spot for the feet to get it to stand but then again i mean being a smaller figure there's not quite as much you know weight or pressure on the joints so it probably wouldn't be too hard to stand but as you can see it can stand quite nicely we do have the peg and everything here inside the base to hold it up but as it turns out we don't really need that right now but as far as the size goes, we'll go ahead and get some measurements on our Guan Long. For a length, you are looking at about eight and a quarter inches, or right around 21 centimeters for a length. And then for a height, 
just shy of about three and a quarter inches or a little over eight, maybe approaching eight and a half centimeters, but not quite. I'd say right around eight centimeters. But again, being that it's an articulated figure that really depends on you and how you want to position it, how large it's going to be when it comes to the height and length. But for a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Beasts of the Mesozoic Guanlong. And you can, without question, see it is definitely one of the smallest of the, well, Tyrannosaur series. It is the smallest so far, but even as far as the overall Beasts of the Mesozoic, aside from some of the smaller raptors and like the hatchlings and stuff like that, uh, it's definitely the smallest overall, or one of the smallest, I should say. But for another comparison, before we even bring in any Tyrannosaur series releases to compare with, there is the Zuniceratops next to the Guanlong. Now, this is the smallest of each from the series. Again, the Tyrannosaur series is new, so this is the smallest so far. But when it comes to the Ceratopsian series outside of the hatchling, Diabloceratops figures, the Zuniceratops is the smallest. It's also one of the more popular releases from the Ceratopsian series, so it was one that I felt like would be a pretty good one for a comparison. And then for a comparison between the Guanlong and Dailong, you can see again that the Dailong is way larger than our Guanlong, but they are also two very different scales, as the Dailong is one sixth scale, the Guanlong is one eighteenth scale, so. They're not accurately sized next to each other, and you can definitely again see that here looking at them, as we obviously have a very, very big difference in size. Now, when it comes to two figures that are scaled correctly with each other, we have the Juvenile Rex and Guanlong, as both of these are 1 18th scales, so if you happen to have one of these and not the other, then this should help to give you an idea of the size. And then when it comes to a comparison between the Utyrannus and Guanlong, you can obviously see again size difference is pretty massive, but these should be to scale with each other again. Both are 1 18th scale releases, so this shows you just in general what a difference of size is between these two species, but also, of course, a difference in size between the two figures. Now, these two are obviously also not to scale with each other, as we have the 135th scale Tyrannosaurus from the Beasts of the Mesozoic, and we also have the Guanlong again at 118th scale. But since the 135th scale Rex is one of the more popular from this series, and rightfully so, this should help to give you an idea of a size next to the Guanlong. And then for one final comparison, just to give you another idea of a size with a very popular release, we have a Mattel Velociraptor here next to the Guanlong. And you can see, again, obviously lengthwise the Guanlong wins, but as far as overall body mass and height, I would say the Mattel Raptor wins. So they're not too far off when it comes to a size between each other, but different, of course, as far as proportions go, we definitely have a bit of a longer tail on our Guanlong. So this brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series 1 18th scale Guanlong is an absolutely awesome figure and I would say very very high up on my list of favorites especially when it comes to the paint scheme. I think the actual color scheme given to this is probably my favorite so far on any of these figures. I didn't know that I'd find one so quickly that I would like in person better than the U Tyrannus paint scheme because I really love that but the paint scheme on this Guanlong just looks so good and just honestly is perfect for this species. The dark tones just look great. They look really nice and natural. I am usually a fan of darker tones on my theropods. I don't know why. It's just always been something that uh, maybe it's because when I grew up, it was, you know, that's how dinosaurs were usually portrayed with like darker tones. It wasn't until I got a little bit older that we started to kind of give dinosaurs brighter tones. So something in me just always feels like they should be darker tones, even if they weren't necessarily darker tones in real life. They could have been really flashy colors, which Beasts of the Mesozoic has done a great job of proving that to me over time when it comes to how bright and colorful they've made some of their figures. But Again, the darker tones look so good on this one. I love the way that they've given it some nice flashiness with the striping and that kind of off-white running down. And of course, those gorgeous blues that we see through the course of the figure. So really big fan of this paint scheme. And the application of the paint as well is just really nicely done. On top of that, again, the sculpt is fantastic. We have all kinds of really nice, really fine feather detail through the course of the figure. It's all very high quality and really vibrant on the sculpt. We also have some nice looking skin texture. Texture, but again, the figure is so much smaller than a lot of the others. I feel like you can't truly appreciate how nice the detailing is until you actually have the figure in hand and you can get it in a nice light, really take a good closer look at it. 
and then you should hopefully be able to appreciate how beautiful the actual sculpting and detailing is overall. On top of that, the figure has some really nice articulation. I would say it's probably the second best when it comes to how smooth the articulation is, as well as the range of movement you have for the figure. Of course, we have one less area of articulation on this as far as the tongue not articulating, but the actual range of movement on this one is probably second best right behind the juvenile tyrannosaur and i actually think when i was you know talking about the articulation i may have missed out on the fact that it has a bendable wire tail i did want to state that as well in case i missed saying that earlier because i actually don't recall mentioning that but again the articulation is great the paint's great the sculpt is great we also have the ability for the figure to stand on its own without the base but you can use the base as well again the base helps to create a nice scene for your dinosaur of course a great way to display it is including the base always i'm a huge fan of bases so i love the inclusion of the base and this one looks really nice again kind of making me feel like it's right next to a stream bed or a river bed of some kind so as a whole this is an awesome release yet again definitely a very high recommendation from me so if you are interested in picking this up i will include a link in the description to where you can do that right now on the creative beast studio website so make sure you check that link go grab this gorgeous guanlong and like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching